cross-culture community, people of faith, viewers from all over the world, partners in the work of kingdom building and family of God. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to our worship time with premier service Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Christ defined eternal life not in terms of longevity, but in terms of relationship. Today, Pastor Tiffany explains that eternal life is born only out of a fully obedient love-faith relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, demonstrated by no less than Christ's likeness. O oh God, in you I hope, may I never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me, O oh God, for protection and a strong place for salvation, for you are my foundation and my refuge. May we allow the Holy Spirit to renew our minds and transform our hearts as we listen to the message today. God bless you. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas the one who by his strength established the mountains, being girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples, so that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it, 
with showers and blessings its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows cloth themselves with flock. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. The word of the Lord. So, God the Father sent his Son into the world. We know that. But it was not a begrudgingly obeyed command. Remember, he emptied himself. It was a volunteer mission. For those of you who are studying Philippians, in Philippians 2, 6-7, it said, Although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, being made in the likeness of men. So, basically, Jesus could have held his place in the Godhead. He could have stayed in heaven, enjoying all the benefits of being God. But instead, he chose to empty himself and become a servant to the people who created. I don't know. If I was God, I would probably want to stay at the right hand of my father and just relax. Why would I want to go down to earth to these smelly, you know, dirty, bad people to save them? I don't know. But I guess that's why we'll never understand Jesus. Anyway, so how was he sent? And why was he sent? So this evening, we're going to look into that. The prophecy of the sending. The sending of the Son of God was not an afterthought. It was a plan that was conceived before creation. It was told in the genealogy in, Je in Genesis 5. Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahaliel, Jared, Enosh, Methuselah, and so on. Man appointed mortal sorrow. The blessed God shall come down teaching his dead, shall bring the despairing rest. So you're probably wondering, why are we going back to Genesis? You know, it's, it's 21st century. But way back in Genesis, it was already a given that God himself would be sent to earth. There was a prophecy that Isaiah said, and we read this every Christmas in Isaiah 9, 6. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Eternal Father, and Prince of Peace. So Isaiah has also written the prophecy that this child would be born of a virgin. So this has also been alluded to in Genesis 3. So when God referred to the one who would crush Satan as being the seed of the woman, it's Jesus. It's the son. The promise of sending. So when the time came for the prophecy to be fulfilled, the sending was promised to the virgin that would bear the Son of God. In Luke 1, 26 to 35, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth. Now we all know the Christmas story, so I'm not going to read everything. But to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the descendant of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And then we all know what happened. The angel Gabriel said, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. And she just submitted, which was interesting. The angel was telling her, you're going to conceive the Son of God. And you're going to conceive it in not a very natural way. But the sending of the Son of God was promised. The procedure of the sending. So how would it take place? What would be the procedure that God would use to send his Son? Matthew 1, 18 to 25 tells us, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. Now we all know the story that Mary was betrothed to Joseph, and Joseph, you know, he wanted to divorce her quietly because he thought that he was, she was sleeping around, basically. But then the angel of the Lord says to him, 
Do not be afraid to take her as your wife. And we all know that from them stand Jude and James and all the other brothers. Here's the part, though. God with us in that passage, right? Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translates meaning God with us. And Joseph arose from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. It's amazing how dreams can give us a vision for what God wants us to do. But then again, back then, when God gave them a vision, a dream, and a purpose, they didn't question it. He just obeyed and did what was necessary. But let's remember that Joseph and Mary came from the town of Nazareth, which is basically the province. So the Israelites were looking for a king that came from Jerusalem to kind of take them away from Rome. Too much history, I know. But we just need to remember that when God came to this earth, he didn't come to be a king. He came because he wanted to get to know the people he created. He probably scraped his knees as a boy. He got splinters in his hands because he was a, a carpenter with his dad. He probably fished. He uh, did all kinds of things little boys did. That kind of proves that he did empty his own divinity. The proclamation of the sending. So the Son of God's been sent. They went forth two proclamations. A supernatural star be began to shine in the east and beckoned the Magi to make the journey to Israel. Right? We three kings of Orient are. But in reality, they took really long to get there. We won't talk about that because that's the Christmas story. We already talked about that in December, right? Glory to God in the highest and peace to men of goodwill. So the Son of God has been sent and the sending was proclaimed. So what's the point? Is the point of the sending of Jesus Christ because in December we feel good and we watch the Hallmark Channel and Hallmark makes so many cards and they make money? How did one little baby turn the world upside down? When he grew up, in reality, he came not to be born, but to sacrifice himself. I'm going to read a popular verse tonight, and I'm going to read it in a way that was shared when I was a part of a former church called New Song. This is John 3, 16 to 17. For God so loved the world that he gave away his only begotten son. He gave away his son. He didn't just give him willy-nilly. He didn't just give him without purpose. He sent him down so that he could really be with us and he can have relationship with us. I was sharing last night um, when I shared the, the bearing fruit message I shared two weeks ago when all of you were here about how the abundant life and the eternal life is an exchange life. Mm -hmm. We have to be willing not only to live for Christ and accept him as our savior, but we need to accept him as our Lord as well. Amen. We need to be willing to exchange our lives in order for us to really fulfill the kingdom call. It's not just pray the prayer. You know, I accepted God as my savior. That's it. No. Nope. Again, I'm going to piggyback to that last message. We have to bear fruit. We have to bear fruit because how are we going to show the love of God that says here in, in John 3.16 if we have no fruit? For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world. Some say condemn, but that the world should be saved through him. So we all know that Jesus was sent here to pay for our sins. But the problem with that is many times we think that we can just be safe in God's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, he saved me. What a great life preserver. I'm just going to go ahead and live my life the way I want to, with no regard for the fact that he was sent for a purpose, that I may have a rich adventure with him. Mm -hmm. Let's not be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. The kingdom is at hand, church. 
Yes, we have eternal life, but what are you doing in the workings of the kingdom? I'm going to say it again. There's so many job openings out there in the kingdom. If you know that you have a gift, a talent, if you know God is calling you to do something for his love, do it. In 1 John 4, 9 to 10, by this the love of God was manifested in us. He sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. So how do we live through him? By what? Showing, being Jesus to the world. Through the being and not the doing. It's become quite a slogan here in cross-culture Pomona. The being, not the doing. So, your works are a manifestation of your faith. If you're not doing anything to grow your faith, then your faith is dead. Hmm. Because God loves us so much, we should be willing to do things for the love of God. Hmm. He did something so great. He could have stayed at the right hand of the Father, but instead he decided to become this little smelly baby born to a virgin in a know-nothing town. And then he was killed to pay for our sins. And yet, many times, especially in this Western Christian culture, we take for granted just how precious what he did for us is. The moment that we don't start to walk in this adventure with him, the moment we're no longer excited that he sacrificed so much for us, the moment that we decide that, oh, I can choose not to read the Bible. I can choose not to have a prayer time. I can choose not to walk side, side, side by side with him. That cross, it's much more than a piece of jewelry that people wear. It is exactly what the gas chamber is to the modern person today. He was executed for our lives. Yes. He was executed and he shed blood and he was tortured. Mm. And yet he was saying things that are so profound. Mm. He loved us so much that when the people down below, the scribes, the Pharisees were making fun of him, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We can learn from him. I'm not saying take bullets and look for trouble, but I'm saying when trouble finds you, show to the world that the kingdom life is so much better. You can deal with anything that comes your way. Yes, the world is challenging, but if the Son of Man can do this, can be executed for our lives, and we can enter into the kingdom because we're adopted, grafted into the kingdom, then let's be willing to do all things for his love. We may not be sinless, but let's not take the sacrifice for granted. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the text. John 17, 3. And this is, I'll say, this is the exchange life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus mm -hmm. who was sent to us. Tonight, this afternoon, if you're facing anything that you feel is blocking you from truly doing things for the love of God, may this be a reminder to us that in everything we face, we face greater. Any little challenge that we have, church, tonight, that we are facing, is nothing compared to what the, what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. Yes. We're all saved here, yes. We've all accepted him as our Lord and Savior, yes. But what are you doing for him? Mm -hmm. How are you showing that your faith is working? Yes. If we're not doing anything for his love, mm -hmm. how can we show to him, thank you, that you have done this horrific thing for us? It was so horrific that St. Peter himself wanted to be crucified upside down. Mm -hmm. because he felt that he was not in any space 
to be crucified the way that Jesus, the Son of Man, was. Let, let tonight be the time where you ask God, where do you want me to send, where do you want to send me? Let this be the time where you, we all understand what our purpose here on this earth is. Mm -hmm. The purpose here on this earth is to live as Christ, to die as gain. When uh, those of us who are water baptized, the meaning of that is so precious if you take the time to look at it. We are dying to self mm -hmm. and we are being raised anew, new life. New hope, new peace. Heavenly Father, right now. The promise of your sending was that we would have an exchanged life. Mm -hmm. The purpose of your sending was so that we wouldn't have to die eternally. Lord, we are just so thankful. We're approaching the Holy Week soon. We're approaching Easter soon. And we're so grateful, God, that in this short little reflection. It's preparing us, Father, for the seven last words that are to come. Mm -hmm. Again, Lord, we can put for God's will of the world on our cars, on our shirts, on our computers even. But Lord, let us write scripture on the tablets of our Yes. It's so simple, God. We don't need to complicate things. You exchanged your life for ours. So let us do the same. Mm. Right now, if anyone here tonight feels that tug, that reminder, that you could be showing Christ more, that we could be doing more for him, Showing that the kingdom life is worth it. Share it between you and God. Ask God, how can I show who you are to the people I work with? Mm. Not necessarily about religion. But like Kathy B. Gifford said, if somebody has a cure for cancer, would you keep quiet? Mm. Her words were, I have the cure for the malignancy of the soul. And that is faith in the almighty ever present living God. So let us not be silent church. Mm. Let us be bold. Who cares about what people say? This is our time to reflect and to give back to God what it is that we feel is lacking so that we can gain the strength as we go out into the world. Yes. To show them as James says, when tests and trials come at us from all sides, our faith will show its true colors. That's from the Message Bible. As we slide on into celebration of the Lord's Supper, take your time to reflect. Take your time to ask Him what it is that your heart's desire is to do for Him. But at the same time, don't get so caught up doing things for Him that you forget to abide in him. Whatever is a barrier to you coming to celebrate with us the Lord's Supper today. Lay it at the feet of the cross. Lay it at the feet of the ever-present, yes. all-loving, merciful, gracious God. Yes. I don't know because he lives. You are sent to show us what it means to sacrifice. Yes. Well, Heavenly Father, these people of faith right here are here for a purpose, God. Mm. As I mentioned on Wednesday, we are not people who show up for two hours just to give our ceremony, just to give you some token, token time, God. Mm. But we are here because we know that you've given us so much. And yet we give you so little. Father, let us give you more yes. than we could ever imagine. Let us be like the saints in China and India and the Middle East. Who 
the moment they receive you, they're willing to exchange their life for you. Yes. That's so tough to picture in this first world country. We have so many options. We have the choice to not live for you as fully as we should. But these people are doing it unto them. If this, if tonight, you have not fully grasped what the exchange life is. I'm not talking about praying the sinner's prayer. I'm talking about really rededicating yourself to this exchange life. Yes. Saying that I'm all in. Mm. No matter the cost. No matter what is being thrown at me in this world. Yes. I'm all in because you're all in for me. Mm. Thank you, Jesus, so much. And Lord, we pray for the Lord's table. We pray, God, that you would just be with us as we celebrate not just your death, but your life. Yes. And our lives in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Eternal life is a life showing Christ likeness when we work out our salvation with fear and trembling, as admonished by St. Paul. May we continue to receive grace upon grace as we yield ourselves to God, sharing in the sufferings of Christ and experiencing the power of His resurrection, which transforms us daily to be more and more Christ like to our neighbors and to the world. And may you enjoy the kingdom of God where there is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Grace and peace to you all. God bless you. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all things will be added to you. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. And my God will supply every need of yours according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. If you have questions on how to send your tithes and offerings, please do not hesitate to ask during our deep dive into the Word session. Please stay tuned for our deep dive into the Word of God at 5 o'clock p.m. You may start logging into our Zoom session right now so that we can have a little fellowship and community time before our deep drive. God bless you.